Their bench outscores Philadelphia 44 to 26. That's their uh, the BWA, as Marcus Morris refers to it. The that bench mean? with attitude. Okay. Ooh. And they win at so, 105. You can't say that. Well, 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 we, know that boy, we know that Morris boy got out of jail. Five to eight. Why got out of jail? Oh, because his mama had a bad date and they whipped his ass. <laughs> <laughs> they whipped the dude ass. And where they take it to you, that Chuck? They took it to Applebee's. <laughs> yeah. They're like, hey, you'll take my mama to Applebee's. I'm going to whoop your ass. Philadelphia comes out on the short end of this one. Here's Joe LMB. <laughs> <laughs> Man, JJ mentioned it earlier. This is not a rivalry. Uh, I don't know our record against them, but it's pretty bad. They always kick our ass. So uh, this is not a rivalry. And JJ mentioned that earlier. So uh, we just got to, you know, work together and figure it out. Yeah, he, he's talking about JJ Redick, who had said, "Look, this is not a rivalry, Boston and Philly, until we beat them in the playoffs." As the the Celtics got the better of them in five last year. What was your takeaway from this, Kenny, from watching these two teams who figure to be 1-2-3 or 1-3 or whatever in the Eastern Conference? I just see as good as the perimeter guys are in Boston, and you add Haywood, you're talking about Brown last year and Tatum this year, those two guys, they're just as good on the defensive end. They, they, they're able to chase people off the three-point line and make you into penetrators and drivers. So then all of a sudden, they can take you off the dribble, but then eliminate you from taking easy three and cont uncontested three-point shots because they're athletic enough and quick enough and actually long enough uh, wingspan to stop that. To me, that was the most impressive thing uh, that I saw even tonight and last year. Their, their ability, with, even with Rozier to, and Smart, to defend the three-point line and then take you off the dribble. Ernie, yes. Boston, Boston's are young, they're talented, and they love to compete. Now, when you have those three combinations and you play the right way, you're definitely going to be hard. Would you imagine they practice that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's probably yep. up and down. Well, let me say one thing. Probably up and down. The Sixers were smart enough to understand those standing jump shooters they had on the wing last year who couldn't get their shot. They got rid of those guys. They went out and got Wilson Chandler, who's betting those guys they let go. And he's hurt right he's now. He's hurt right now. But also, I think they realize they need Markel Fultz to play because they couldn't guard them guys. They, Philadelphia, they had great shooters. But they had no defensive presence and, and zero athletic ability on the wings. They address one. Wilson Chandler and Covington can compete to a certain degree from an athletic standpoint. But it's still going to come down to Markel Fultz. He's going to have to pe compete with uh, Rozier, but he's really got to compete uh, with, the, with uh, Kyrie Irving. That, cause that's what it's going to come down to. Because you see, Ben going to do his thing and Joel going to do his thing. Yep. Fultz, they need in his first, Fultz. Fultz in his first NBA start, five points, two of seven shooting. Sixers are held to 87 points and 39% shooting by the Celtics in that 18-point win. Back with more on Inside right after this.